Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting, it's a horse of course, and I'm gonna be sipping on my vanilla chai tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint. My colors are titanium white, green oxide, chrome orange, deep yellow, Mars black, burnt sienna, which I will call rust, and burnt umber, which I always call brown. And of course, you can certainly switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil for drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and all the good stuff in between. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can just print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing an outline of our horse. We're gonna keep this very basic and simple, no details on this outline. We just really wanna give ourselves a nice shape that will be able to block in the background color, the base color for it. So I'm gonna be using my pencil. I'm gonna give you a couple of markers. We'll just kinda of connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll magically have the shape of a horse's head from behind. So where I'm gonna start is I'm going to make a marker on the right hand side of my canvas, a little bit below my halfway point. So if this is about halfway, I'm about an inch or two below that. I'm make myself a little bit of a marker in through here. The next mark that I'm gonna make is right about here. So this is about a quarter or a fifth of the way down my canvas, maybe about four inches down my canvas. And if this is the center left to right of my canvas, I'm a little over to the right. I'm maybe about an inch and a half to two inches over to the right. So I'm making myself a little bit of a marker in through there. The next marker I'm gonna make is down on the left-hand side of my canvas. I'm gonna come up about three and a half inches somewhere in through here, give myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm gonna come in from this marker about, I would say three and a half to four inches and then down about a half of an inch, make myself another marker. So you should have four markers at this point. We're just gonna start connecting our dots right now. So, oh, I want one, one more marker, sorry. I want another marker about an inch higher than this and maybe a little bit to the left. So somewhere right about here is my next marker. So I'm gonna connect these two in through here with a kind of a sloping line. It's gonna come down a bit in through this direction and then back up like this, something like that. And of course yours doesn't have to be perfect. I like to kind of sketch my lines as we go about it. I'm gonna connect this line to this line like this. That should be just a, a hair at a diagonal, not much at all. And then I'm gonna connect this marker to up here. So this is in essence gonna be the left-hand side of the head, part of the face as it comes down. We'll put an eye in there in a minute or a, a bump for the eye. And then it's gonna come down into where this will be the nostril or the nose part. 
So when I do this, I want to have some movement to it. So I'm going to bring it out in a little bit of a curve coming down in through here. And then when I get to about this muzzle part, I'm going to bring it out just a little bit to give a little bit of shape on that nose and then it'll come and meet in here. So I'm going to first just give myself a little bit of a curve on this corner in through here just so I know that that's kind of the angle I want to come in at. And I'm going to take this top marker and just kind of bring it off in a curved line, something like this. And I'm watching my end point because I don't want this to travel out too far because it wouldn't make a, a terrible, a, a lot of sense to do that. So I'm going to bring this in through here. I'm going to just kind of sketch this out to right about here and just kind of bring this down. And right about here is where I'm going to start to maybe give it just a little bit of a bump for that for the bridge of the muzzle and then I'm going to just kind of bring it back down into here. And this doesn't have to be very dramatic, just something so it's not a super straight line. And then I'm going to come about a third of the way down or maybe if this is about halfway, maybe about an inch or two above that and I'm going to come out about an inch. That's going to be the um, farthest part out from my eye and I'm going to give myself a curved line that's going to kind of just jut out from from the head in through here going to meet that part in through there and then it just kind of slopes down into the face in through here and of course you can certainly adjust that as you go i'm going to connect this marker now to this back marker so this is going to be the back side of the neck so I'm going to bring this out just a little bit. We don't need this to be really huge at the top. And I'm going to have it curve into here. So you can, you know, go from either which direction is totally fine. And then I'm just going to kind of curve this back up and through here. And now I just got to give myself a couple of cute ears. So I'm going to have my ears the um, the tips of them. I'm going to actually give you a couple of markers so you can kind of place them accordingly. So if this is where we made that first marker in through here, you can come to the right maybe about an inch, inch and a half and go straight up until you're about an inch away from the top of your canvas. Make yourself a little bit of a marker. And then on the left side, if you come from the center marker, I would say about two, two and a half inches or conversely, if you travel down here, almost maybe to the top of that little eye part, and you're gonna come up and stop a little bit lower than this one. So I'm at like maybe about an inch and a half from the top of my canvas. I'm gonna make my right ear first. So for my right ear, I'm going to have it coming down almost at a straight vertical line. It's got a little bit of a diagonal to it, and then just a little bit of a bump as it comes into the head in through there. And then on the right hand side, I just give the tips of the ears a tiny bit of a curve, not a whole heck of a lot. And then as I'm coming down here, I'm just gonna bring it out just a little bit and then kind of bring it back in towards that head, something like that. And then on the left hand side, this one's gonna be a little bit more exciting than that right one. So as I create my little tip in through here. I'm going to come down on this right hand side, something like this, and then I'll give it a little bit more movement as it's meeting that head. This one's actually going to come into the head, but we don't need to put that detail on there yet. And then on this left hand side, I'm going to bring it down and out just a little bit farther than here, not a whole heck of a lot. And then you can just kind of bring it back in towards the head, something like this. And of course you can do any little adjustments that you want, know that that ear's on that side of the head and then this one's gonna be on this side of the head, so they'll be at a little bit different angle. And then we're gonna utilize our large brush for the next step, so once you've got this done, you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'll be using the tip of my brush and I'm gonna be using a circular type of brush stroke to get these colors on here. I'm looking for just a kind of an abstract, out of focus, 
um, background that might be representational to maybe some flowers or foliage that's way off in the distance. Um, but I'm really just in, in my artistic mind's eye, just looking for something that's going to be complementary to my horse. <laughs> so I am going to start with a little bit of green and a touch of white on my brush. And I'm going to start and I'm going to be making myself a whole bunch of areas of green with a little bit of white that have these soft edges to them. I don't really want this to look polka dotty, but I, what I do want is almost the illusion of kind of out of focus circular type shapes. So when I do this, as I'm creating these um, areas of color, I am using a circular type of brush stroke. And it's okay if you bump into your horse's outline because what's gonna happen is, is we're gonna be painting that horse black anyway. So when you go and you bump into it, it's all right. You'll still be able to see your pencil mark anyways. So right now I just kind of keep adding some of these green kind of spots as I come down in through um, this area down below. I'm going to be using maybe a little bit more white in my mixture, making sure that I've got some kind of touch in the horse, maybe some touching, you know, all different kinds of spots put maybe just a little, little darker up top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making some green or some yellow dots, but I'm not going to wash my brush. So I'm picking up a little bit of yellow and white on my dirty brush, and I'm going to be making a whole bunch of yellow dots. As I work my way down the canvas, what will happen is I will, um, a lot of this green will work itself off of my brush and it will turn into a more vibrant or light kind of yellow. So I'm just, I'm reserving some of these spots for I'm going to have some lighter areas with um, white in a minute too. So I'm not covering up the whole um, background with these colors. I am going to be utilizing some some lightness for, for the white in a little while. But right now just kind of getting some light colored areas on the entire background. And then what I'll do is I'll start picking up just white in a minute so that way I can kind of fill in the blanks. So right now I'm not going to pick up any more green or yellow, just picking up some white to kind of fill in these blanks and to get them to kind of all blend together. So I'm going in between my colors and I can also overlap them a little bit to get them all to kind of talk together and make it look like they're all just kind of out of focus. Your paint may dry more quickly than mine, so this final kind of blending process, you might end up or find out that your paint is dry and it's not really blending like mine is. If that's the case, just either use a little bit more paint or you can go back and pick up some of the yellow and some of the green in order to get these areas to just kind of blend in together so it doesn't look like you have distinct um, just circle spots or polka dots of color. So you want to get these edges where the colors are meeting to look nice and soft and muted and as if they're kind of just blending in together or merging together with our visual um, sight. And you can certainly overlap sections if you wanted, you know, a yellow section to overlap a green section, you could certainly do that. And then I'm just gonna kind of get over here on this side. And if you find that I just totally covered up a whole green green spot, I will, I'll bring that one back in a second. But um, if you find that you want yours lighter or darker, or maybe you wanna add some more you know, green, or you could even add some of that orange that you have on your palette, that would be really nice and complimentary and, and put a more autumnal feel to the painting. So you can certainly um, bend and twist this background as much as you want. But if you can have a couple of really light pops, that's going to show um, that maybe there's some peekaboo spots coming throughout whatever this um, th this background is to show maybe that there's some light source somewhere in the off in the distance or something. And then we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your background all nice and created and you've made any little adjustments or tweaks that you want, you can uh, wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step.
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the base coat of our horse. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm just using black paint. So you can utilize any brush stroke that you want when doing a black background because the black will cover really well. So the only time that you might um, need to do a second coat or anything of that nature is if you had too much fluidity within your your black paint in that case you might end up with some you know evident streaks or some light spots or dark spots but if your black covers as well as mine does you can usually get away with one coat and you can usually do any brush stroke because the brush stroke won't be typically evident when um, when that paint dries I am going to slow down a little bit as I'm coming towards these um, edges and you can have your edges really clean if you want to or they can have a little softness to them that's going to be a visual preference it is an animal so um, with fur so that would be okay if you had a little softness to the edges of it um, and but if you wanted it really on the cleaner side what you can do is you can add a bit of um, moisture to your paintbrush or use a different kind of paintbrush. These bristle brushes will tend to give you more of a um, of a soft edge as opposed to a really crisp clean edge which I don't necessarily need on an animal but if you do to make your painterly eye happy then you could certainly um, either use a different brush or um, put a little bit of moisture in in that paint and then I'm just going to kind of go right up to the top I slow down along those edges but again to just to work with my particular brush but if you feel that you want a different brush you could certainly utilize maybe your medium brush or a different kind of brush to get these edges to be nice and clean but We've got some other special stuff going along around these edges later, so don't feel the need to, to make this perfect at this point. And then even when I get up to those ears, I know that I don't need my ears to be, you know, to have perfect edges to them, so I'm just going to kind of go right down along the side, and if, I, if the edges come out a little on the rougher side, I am all right with that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint the entire thing using black as, as a base coat. Uh, obviously we're painting a black horse um, where we're going to have different colors represented within that fur but just starting with the black base really just gets us off to to a good and easy start um you could it you know if you wanted to you could certainly utilize a different color for like the eyes or the mane as that base coat but for me i know that i'm going to want them really pretty dark anyway so this black just helps me to helps me to start the process and give me an easy way to to build those um, colors and and uh, form on top of it and then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so once you've got your base coat painted in here you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the fur on the ears, the neck, and the back. We, we're gonna separate out our mane, but we'll be painting that later. And we'll also be kind of separating out the face, but we'll be painting that later. So I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you make sure that your base coat is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and dry it that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using black, brown, and white to create the, the fur along um, these areas. But I'm gonna first start by, by creating a kind of a medium gray color. So I've already made it here so you can see where I'm headed. But what I, how, I've got, how I got to that was I used a little bit of white, I used a little bit of brown, and a touch of black. I don't need much 
black um, because it will easily take over. Oh, my burnt sienna is, is looking like it's gonna come into the picture here. Um, but I'm just looking for kind of like a medium warm kind of gray to utilize as a lighter version of black. So when you're doing black fur, you want to have a lighter version of black. So somewhere in the gray region works. A lot of people like to use blue, um, which adds almost like a shine to the black fur. But in this case, I'm kind of looking for a almost like a brownish black on my fur. So I'm going, I'm going to steer more towards brown than, than blue as my light black color. So I've got myself this, this medium kind of grayish brown type of color. I don't need a lot on my brush. So, so much so that I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel. I'd rather err on the side of caution and have to add more paint than to try and back it off of this black. So I just have a very little bit of paint. I'm going to start by separating out these sections. So for my mane, my mane is going to be on the right hand side and that's in essence going to be the ridge or the, the top of the, the neck, the whole neck. And it's the back is going to kind of work its way into that. So I'm in essence going to connect this marker or this little divot to the center of my head using a long arcing motion. But I want this to look, the back to look like it has some, um, like a, a hump almost in through here. So I'm going to take from this corner here and I'm going to go up just a little bit in through here and then just kind of curve it to the right a little bit. And right about here is where I'm really going to start to think, okay, I want to, I want to curve this. Um, so if you want to, you can even start up at the top and you want this to curve to the right before it comes back into here. Not a, not a ton, but enough to um, say that it is in fact going in that direction and then just kind of curve it back in through here. And again, I'm really just looking to kind of separate out where the mane is going to go versus the rest of the head. And then I want to separate out the neck from the from the head or from the face. So I'm going to come, if this is about my, the center of my ear, if you just kind of travel straight down from that, the center of your ear straight down to about here, this is about where I'm going to put my my neck coming out. And I'm going to bring this up just a, a little bit in through here and then curve it back around like this to just under my ear. We're going to have a big, huge flower in through here. So we don't need anything to connect perfectly, but we do want to give it some sort of um, appearance. So now what I'm going to do, I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel. You don't have to wash it. Just wipe it off on your paper towel. Pick up brown. And now I'm going to utilize the remnants of that gray plus brown to give myself the like a, a contour hump of sorts on this um, on the on the neck. And I said I was going to use brown. I think I'm going to use some of my burnt sienna as well. But I just used um, brown to start this, and I know that it will get darker as it dries. So right now I'm just kind of. Um, getting that area on there. I'm picking up a touch of black paint as well to make sure that I've got these two areas to really just kind of talk together and work themselves into one another. I'm going to do the same thing on the back of this ear in through here. So I just have the remnants on my brush really just kind of giving myself a little bit of a light spot back here just so you can feel that that ear is in essence kind of three-dimensional. I'm going to do the same thing here, put a little bit of a light spot on that part of the ear that would kind of buckle out a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this back region. So I'm just using my gray with a tiny bit of brown at this point to get these areas to just really lighten up a bit so they look um, like they've got a little bit of shine, so to speak, on them or dimension to them. And then I'm going to start utilizing a bit of that burnt sienna. So I think I'm going to wash and dry my brush right now. So I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the burnt sienna because I like the way that the burnt sienna looks on top of this when it dries. And we're going to be utilizing that color within um, 
other areas on the mane as well. So I'm just kind of incorporating a little bit onto here. Again, I know that with this black background, this is gonna end up a lot darker when it's dry. So I'm really just kind of getting it to blend in here and putting a little bit more on my brush right now. This part of the back is gonna be the part of the back that is visible the most because it's getting the most light um, from the left hand side. So I am gonna get it to just kind of blend in with the black as it kind of fades down onto this side of the body. And then same thing with this area in through here, just picking up a bit of that burnt sienna, give myself a little bit of this um, extra bit of color on top of there. And this will all make a whole lot of sense when we put the mane on and we got all kinds of other bits of information. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more in those ears. So again, just the burnt siennas on my brush right now. And this is adding what's called contour type of highlights. So we're, we're telling the viewer that this, these parts of, the, of this um, piece of the animal kind of are sticking out a little bit more and taking on some kind of brownish hue, which you know can certainly happen with black fur. So we're gonna, we're gonna put that in through there. And then we are going to be utilizing, um, we're gonna go for our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got these areas in here, of course, I would suggest that you wait for them to dry and see how they look when they dry. And if you wanna add or subtract any information from them, feel free to do so. And then take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna, in essence, kind of be doing the same thing on the face that we did on um, the fur back here. We're gonna be adding our contour kind of highlights to, um, to the face. So I'm gonna be using that gray that we pre-mixed and possibly some black too, just to get it to um, blend in a little bit. You could certainly also use the brown or the burnt sienna if you wanna give it a little bit more of the brownish look, but I'm thinking that this side of the face is kind of um, a little bit in the shadows and I don't wanna go too um, rusty or burnt sienna of a color because I'm gonna, I want my bridal that I'm, we're gonna be putting to really pop out. So I don't wanna take away too much um, from that. And I, all, the eye that we're gonna be putting on also is gonna have that burnt sienna and maybe some yellow. So I'm gonna kind of keep my um, contour highlights to a minimal when it comes to on the face. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm using that gray that we created, plus a little bit of black on my brush just to start. So I'm more, um, I'm erroring on that side of caution. So I'm gonna want one on the eyelid. So I'm gonna come about halfway down here and I'm gonna create myself a little bit of an eyelid that I'm gonna push out past my, um, my outline a little bit. So this is gonna make it look like there's a little bit of an eyelid. I think I need a little more of that gray on here so we can, we can actually see it. And then I'm gonna just bring it back in kind of like a diagonal type of, um, motion and maybe just a little more lightness so we can see it. Keep building that lightness until you can actually see it. There's no point in putting it on if you can't actually see it. So something like that is gonna work for my, um, for my eyelid and you can get it to blend in with the black either with your finger or with a brush. Um, and then I'm gonna come down, I would say maybe about an inch, inch and a half. This is gonna be the bottom portion of the eye or the bottom eyelid somewhere in through here. Give myself a little bit of maybe a slight arcing motion, maybe put a little bit of extra highlight on that front portion of it. And of course, we'll, it'll look much more special when we put all the eye details. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a highlight back in through here behind the eye a bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a couple of highlights for like the muscle structure and the, draw, the jaw structure. So I'm really just gonna give myself these carefree type of um, brush strokes. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black now so I can get them to blend in with the, um, with the black itself. And I'm just gonna kind of keep working this just a little bit with that gray 
and black and less is more you don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot on this we just really want to give the illusion that there's a little bit of shape to um, the face it's going to the star of the face is going to be the bridal anyways so you don't really need much and then I'm going to add a bit of a little highlight or um, shape on the top of this nose and again I'm not really doing much I know that this is not going to be the focal point of the painting the nostril we're not even seeing the side of the nostril or the um the definition of the nostril so you don't really need to do much you could put a little highlight down the top of the muzzle if you wanted to um, but you, again you don't really need to do much this is all going to be hidden by a big flower and that's really all I'm going to be doing for the face we're going to utilize um, our the same medium brush for the next step so once you've got your your contour highlights on your face you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing uh, we're putting our bridle on so I'm going to be using my medium brush the colors that I'm going to be using are rust and white to get it into place um, maybe a little black too so what I'm, I'm keeping mine very simple because I know that the star of the show is really going to be the flowers and the beautiful horse. So the bridle is just kind of an afterthought, not an afterthought, but a, a complimentary kind of detail to it. So I'm going to start with just rust paint with my medium brush. I'm going to first kind of plan it out. I want mine to, I don't need to put any on this right hand side because that's going to be all main and that's going to cover it up. So I'm going to start kind of at the bottom of my ear and just kind of go over to the right, make myself a mark where that um, mane is going to be. And then I'm going to plan where I want this bridle to go on the face. So I want it to kind of come down in through here. It's got to come kind of behind the neck a bit. So this would kind of trail and come behind them behind the neck so I'm gonna give myself a marker so I know when I go to make that line where I'm headed I also know that I want a piece coming off the bridge of the nose so I'm just gonna go directly over from here give myself a little bit of a marker here this one I'm gonna have like two pieces coming off of my bridle I'm gonna have this one kind of coming down I would say maybe come straight down a little bit to the right of that, so right about here. So these, in essence, are my, my points. You could have another piece coming in front of the head as well, um, which I might as well do that, because some of you might want it, and you might want to have it peeking through your flowers. Mine might get hidden by my flower, which is why I'm hesitant to put it on here, but we'll put one on here, and, and in case you want yours to show, you'll have that that um, option available. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my my dots in essence. So I'm going to take this and I'm my, my whole time I'm thinking how what the shape of the head is. So I'm going to take this up uh, and I'm going to give it a curve because the, this part of the head would be curved or the part of the neck would be curved and then it would naturally kind of come down the side of the face in through here and then it, it would kind of curve into this one in through here. So I'm just trying to think of how it would naturally come off of the horse. I would have one in through here. This would, to me, be a little bit rounded in, in this direction, something like this. And again, I'm fairly confident this piece is gonna get well hidden by <laughs> my beautiful flower. And then everything kind of comes from this central location. I'm gonna have this kind of coming down into, into this piece in through here, like this. And then I'm gonna have this piece coming into here. So this one to me is gonna be kind of curved um, to mimic the, the shape of the face. So I'm gonna kind of bring this like this and then I would sit here and just kind of widen it as much as I I want these pieces to be wide you could certainly have yours very narrow or wide whatever whatever is visually appealing to you I'm gonna have a little piece on this um, section here that kicks out a little bit this is uh, it's gonna have that uh, this is where it's gonna clasp so I'm gonna bring this little section out like that, just kind of kick it out a little bit like that. And then I'm going to just make sure that I have this 
as wide as I want. And once I have it as wide as I want, what I'll end up doing is I'm going to utilize a little bit of white for a highlight. So I'm picking up a touch of white with my rust. I, I'm going to put just a teeny bit up in through here. I know again that a lot of this upper region is going to be covered by a beautiful flower. Um, so I'm not going to pay much attention to it down here. My whole flower is going to be in through here. So down in through here, I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight coming down this front piece. So just rust and white is what's on my brush right now. Maybe I have a little highlight on this piece. So rust and white, maybe a little sneak of a highlight in through there. And then a pretty big highlight on this tip because I know that that's where we would see it the most. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And oh, you know what? Sorry. I washed and dried my brush, but I want a little I want a little piece in through here, this little clasp. So I just put rust back on my brush. Little clasp or little thing right there. I'm going to put a little white stripe on that for a little highlight. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and put a couple of strategic little shadows and stuff. So wash and dry my brush, take a little bit of black. I'm going to put a little tiny shadow in between here. So just black paint. A little bit of black is going to give me a shadow underneath here. Uh, I don't think I need any more shadows, but I do need a little, um, a little hook. So wash and dried my brush. I'm picking up a tiny bit of white. I'm going to put a little hook right in through here. So just a little curve like that. A little, um, I suppose you could use your small brush for this little part here too. Just a little kind of hooky do dad like that, <laughs> a little metal piece. And then I'm going to wash and dry and put a tiny bit of black just to put a little shadow behind that. Oh, I'll put a shadow underneath that little leather piece too. So a little black on my brush right now. Put a tiny bit of a shadow, 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 and shadow. And that's all I'm going to do for my bridal. You could certainly, you know, sit here and fiddle with it as much as you want. But I would probably say wait to fiddle too much because you'll probably, again, hide a lot of it with some flowers. So you could certainly, you know, put your flowers on and then work on it later. So I am going to be utilizing my small brush for the next step. So once you've got your bridle on, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing the eye. I'm using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, rust, and yellow. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to be using very little bit of paint throughout the entire process. So that way, as I'm adding these little um, marks of color, they will be drying really quickly for me so I can add the layers of information on top. So when I'm doing something like this, I like to kind of work from the back forward. So to me, the back of this particular object is inside the eye. So I'm going to add the colored part onto the eye, leaving the pupil, then I'll add a little bit of shine onto the outside of the eye, and then we'll do some eyelashes and then we'll be all done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit, a tiny bit of rust and a tiny bit of yellow on my brush at the same time. So very little bit. I'm going to add like a little bit of a crescent type of shape down in the bottom left hand corner of the eye. You can, as it's drying, if you feel like you want to add more or make it a little bit brighter, feel free to do so. I'm leaving a little bit of black around the edge of the eye so that way it ends up looking almost like it's fading into the darkness. So you can just kind of keep adding the, that rust and yellow as much as you want. And if it dries and you're like, oh, I want a little bit more, then feel free to add a little bit more. So then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some of that gray that we created earlier. So very little bit on my brush. I'm gonna create what I like to refer to as like the glaze or the haze on, on top of the eye. I'm not gonna go all the way up to that eyelid. I'm gonna go just a little bit down from that, adding a bit of gray, and then just kind of pulling it down a little bit. So on the left hand side. So I want there to appear as if there's a little bit of like a, a 
a glaze like uh, the outside shine part on that window so you can still see where that pupil is you can still see some of that color at the bottom they might I think I'm going to elevate that color at the bottom a little bit I just added a bit more um, rust and yellow to my brush just to uh, get this a bit brighter and then I'm going to put the sparkle on the eye or the brightest reflective part. So I washed and dried my brush. I picked up a bit of white paint. Now when I do this, I'm not going to bring it all the way to the edge. I'm gonna just kind of streak down a couple of um, reflective type of marks coming down that eye. I'm not going all the way to the top, not going all the way to the bottom, just kind of giving the illusion that there is in fact some sort something shining uh in in this beautiful horse's eye and you might want to you know do a couple of s swipes whatever whatever makes you happy and then i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to add some eyelashes so when i do these eyelashes you might find that you're going to run through a little bit of wet paint the wet white and if that happens don't worry about it you just work it on in but what i'm going to do is the eyelashes are going to be coming down and out they're going to be pretty darn long i'll have some that are pretty long maybe about out to here i'm going to be using rust black and white and you want them to kind of overlap that eye a little bit i've got i'm going to have them longer on the left and shorter on the right hand side so i'm going to start with a little bit of rust on my brush and i'm going to start kind of right at the top of that eye just kind of bringing a few out like this. So definitely kind of down and out a little bit like that. And I'm just gonna kind of put a lot of them in place with this rust color first. And I, I went through a little bit of that white, so that's giving me some lighter ones, which is awesome. And I just really want it to look pretty darn natural, so just gonna add those in through there. Now I'm picking up a bit of black paint just to make sure that I've got some little black ones in throughout here. And when using the black, if you wanna put a tiny bit of water on your brush, that will help you to pull them out a little bit further um, with a nice kind of fluid brush stroke. And you know, you don't really have to do much. You could certainly add a bit more, um, uh, a bit more lightness to it if you wanted to. I just added a bit of white on my brush just so you can really see those eyelashes and bring them out as far as you want and then you can kind of just kind of keep tweaking them to make them as fluffy as you want they can really come out pretty darn far you could use a smaller brush if you wanted to but i think that's all i'm going to be doing i might make that little colored part on the eye a bit brighter so a little more orange or uh, yellow and rust i can keep just adding to that until it gets as bright as i want and then we're going to use our large brush for the next or medium brush for the next step so once you've got your eye completed you can put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be doing the first layer of our flowers I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm just going to be using white paint. So the reason why I am using white paint is because I have a really dark background for most of where these flowers are going to go and I want my end result on that color to be very vibrant. I want my yellow to be really yellow and my orange to be really orange and I don't want to have to struggle with making that happen. So I'm going to be using white as my base coat which will help to um, cover this darkness and will bring my end colors much brighter because they'll be working on a white base. So I'm going to be having one flower here, a big flower here, one is going to be up and through here and then I'll have one down here on the bridle. I'm going for a very generic um, like a autumn type of sunflower uh, flower Sunflowers are really big and then there's a variety of them that comes out in the autumn that are a little bit smaller with smaller centers and I really like the colors for them. So I'm going to be, that's the, the style of flower that I'm going for. Very generic like daisy, sty, daisy type, of, um, type of flower. So I'm going to just do a center with a circle and then I'm going to be bringing out these petals in this curved kind of fashion. I'm going to do some longer ones and some shorter ones. I'm going to have some coming over in through here. I'm just kind of 
giving myself a little bit of a footprint right now. I'll add more petals in a second, but I like to know where I'm going. So if I feel like I'm gonna get overexcited with things like I do with petals, <laughs> I try and kind of map it out so I don't, you know, put one petal way out here, one's gonna go way far down past the eye. So right now I'm just kind of mapping out a few of my petals and then I can sit here and be a little bit more carefree. I think I just had wet paint on my hands there. So I'm doing these in a curved kind of fashion, different lengths bringing them to my uh, my center area where I designated as that and like letting gravity take over a little bit so they'll be a little bit curved. If you wanna show your bridle in through there, you can certainly separate those petals so you can have a little hint of that color in through there. That's gonna be your, um, your call if you want to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do one over here. So this one I'm going to have looking from the side as if maybe it's attached to the bridle that came over in this direction or like stuck down in the um, in the main or something. So I'm going to have the top of this one like this and this one I'm going to have kind of um, like we're seeing it from the side. So I'm like it's almost laying down on the main something like this. So I'm, I'm not going to have um, these ones at the top might be a little bit shorter because they might be um, over on, you know, uh, turned over on the side a bit or curled or something. So I'm not going to have them too, too um, tall on that ear. I think I want this a little bit thicker in through here. Maybe I've got one or two coming out past here. Maybe I'll have one in through here. I want this to kind of be split over the main. So that's why I'm kind of leaving that out a little bit. Maybe one will go up like that. You have fun with it. It's a flower. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. Now I'm going to have one um, down in through here. So this one's just going to be maybe um, right in this little area here. We're just going to see this part of it because the other part is going to be hidden down um, underneath uh, the body in through here. So I'm going to bring maybe one up like this. I, I don't want it to take over down here. I want this one to really maybe look a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna um, take my time with figuring out how I want these petals to go so they don't overwhelm it. But I like how they're resting right on the back side of the back because it'll pop out really well for me. So I think this is pretty good. And then we're gonna be utilizing our uh, large brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your beautiful flowers on here, you can put this medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the mane. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are that gray that we created, white, brown, rust, and black. And how I'm gonna do this is I want that top side or the side that is facing the left to be the brightest, and then it's just gonna fade off into the darkness over here. So the way that we have this horse positioned, the, the center of the mane will in essence kind of disconnect from this line right about here. This part or this bump right here is usually the part where if you ever see a horse with a saddle on it and that they have that part that the person holds onto the saddle, that sits here. So it's almost like a bump on the horse's back and the mane is gonna come. I, I wanted us to incorporate that bump so the mane will kind of disconnect and end up like a little center point here. So I'm gonna be using my lighter gray to kind of get the shape of the mane and then we'll, we'll put some darkness on the right and some lightness on the left to, to have it all finished. So one of the biggest things here, I like to use my bristle brush because I kind of can use a scrubbing te type technique and really pull that paint and give it these individual type of, um, type of uh, pieces of hair. So I really like this kind of brush to do that with. Um, so that's why I'm utilizing it. And you never need a lot of paint. I don't want to have these big clumps of paint because I want it to look like there's individual pieces of hair. So this way with a very little bit of paint, I'll be able to kind of pull it and make it continue to look like there's individual pieces of hair. 
The other big thing that we're trying to do here is make the viewer understand how round this mane is. If you just take the mane and paint it straight down from here, it's gonna make the whole backside of the neck look flat. So we've gotta give it this curve in order to tell the viewer that the mane grows up and then it lays over that piece of body. So I'm gonna put a little bit of my original gray paint on my brush and you can even, to start the process, put a little bit of water on your brush so that way you're working with kind of a fluid type of paint so you don't run the risk of having too much. So I'm gonna start right on that, line, that original line that we created and I'm gonna to start to pull this up and over. The wider, the more up this curve goes and the wider it is will make the, the main feel like it has a lot of bulk to it and make it feel like it has um, a lot of width to it. So that's definitely something that would make this horse look more realistic. So I'm taking it from that, that line that we created. I wanted to disconnect right about here. So I, they can certainly look like it blends in with this area, but um, I wanted to kind of come out just a little bit in through here. So just using a little bit of that paint to do so. And I also want the mane to look like it stops at some point. So I wanna keep some of this darkness underneath here as well. So I've got this coming in through here. I've got this curved like this, and I'm really just kind of forming where I want this mane to go. We'll put a few little straggler pieces on the end later, but right now I'm just, just getting to you know, really put this mane in place. And of course you could have different colored, a different colored mane too. There are black horses that have different colored mane. I just hit a little of my white, wet white from my flower, which we're just gonna embrace and work it right into that mane. Um, but if you run into that challenge too, it just, just work it out. Just let it, let it happen in that, in that um, mane. So I've got good direction. I call these directional brush strokes in, um, in the lighter area telling us where this, this mane kind of originates from. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to give the fullness or the, the waves or the rest of the mane coming on this side. So I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna, my rust color, to get some of this chestnut kind of look involved. And I still, I, I need to make sure that I maintain this curve right along the, the top of it. Because if I, if I steer away from that, then it's definitely going to take away from the fullness of this, of the mane. And once I've got that, I just can kind of keep working. I'm starting to get it to come all the way down in through here. If you want it to be a little wavy, you can certainly every now and again, just kind of pop in a little bit of a wave from your brush. You don't need to do much again. It's not, it's not how much hair do you need to put on here because it's intended to look like it's black. So with, with little hints or highlights of, of other colors in it. I'm gonna pick up now, I'm gonna pick up some brown just to kind of intermingle a little bit with that chestnutty kind of burnt sienna color and letting everything kind of talk together and intermingle. I think I wanna add a little bit more of this weave down in through here, bringing it bringing some of it all the way to the edge. You can even overlap the edge a little bit like I'm doing. You'll see when we put those little final pieces on how that will make a difference. Now I'm picking up black. So the black is gonna help to ensure that all of these colors work together. So when you're going through this process, sometimes what happens is we, you know, without knowing it, we, we turn this, what's supposed to be black fur or black hair into too light, too much of a different color. So what I like to do throughout the process is it reintroduce that black throughout it. So if I have accidentally brought some of it too light or you know too too rich of a color, this will keep me in check. And I'm I, you can see I'm not painting all of it, just kind of making sure that that black it definitely st is still evident in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
amp up this little highlight part. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. We're gonna put little, de little pieces coming off here, the top and over here when we get to our final details, but right now I'm just concentrating on the main, on the main, main part. <laughs> We're gonna have to spell that one out, but um, so I'm gonna, I want this to show that that left-hand side has light. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of white and a little bit of brown on my brush, and you can just kind of wipe it off on the side of your palette. And this is gonna be short, quick strokes. So I just want this to look like we've got a little bit of maybe that the start of the main in through here so it kind of starts here and it just is growing in this direction maybe we have those little straggler pieces along the edge and then it's starting to fall over onto that right hand side so I'm in my head I'm saying it's catching the light from the left hand side and you can get this to be as bright as you want this is going to tell the viewer where it's growing out of the um, of the neck in certain parts if you see it you know see that directional brush stroke a little bit more that will tell the viewer that it, you know this is where it grows out and it kind of goes up and over and of course you can play with this until it is everything that you had hoped it would be again i'm not using a lot of paint on my brush very minimal paint just kind of pulling those edges and then you can just kind of sit and tweak it as much as you want add more of that rust color add more of the brown if you want it to be more evident feel free to to enhance it or if you need to put more black in it feel free to do so and then we are going to switch brushes to our small brush for the next step so once you've got your beautiful main on here you can put this uh, large brush away of course I'm just gonna these are, these are the these are the times that I have difficulty stopping painting but I'm gonna put my large brush away take out my uh, small brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting our flyaway hair. <laughs> the little tiny detail hair is coming off of the mane. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are predominantly black and brown, but you could certainly use some rust or, and or some white or some gray, whatever you'd like to do. So how I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to be using a little bit of watered down black paint. So I've got my small brush. I add a couple of drops of water right in my paint so it's like an ink consistency. This will allow me to get some nice skinny type of um, type of pieces of hair. So I want to kind of keep them in the direction that the hair is coming off of the mane. And this is going to, so I just picked up black and now I'm picking up some brown. This is going to allow me to get this edge of the neck or of the hair to look more natural as opposed to just a straight line. So I add a little bit of wiggle and wave to it. And this again, will just get those little tiny pieces coming off the, the edge of the mane and get it to look like it's not so straight. So if the black is too much for you, you can certainly add, like I'm gonna add a little bit of white um, maybe a little black and a little rust. So just kind of intermingle those colors so it feels nice and natural to you there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up on the little tippy top. So I'm gonna have a couple of little straggler pieces just kind of making their way out past the um, flower. And you can have as many as you want. You can have them kind of arcing over so it looks like they're just kind of coming out the top part of that mane and get them to be different lengths. You can have, again, add a little bit of white onto it or the brown or, you know, whatever makes it feel nice and natural to you. And then I'll do a couple of little pieces coming out over here on the left hand side, um, out past the bridal. Um, and the and the flower at the forehead. So maybe just a couple of little pieces just kind of getting to just kind of come out and make their way out here. You can have them long, have them overlap. Maybe you want your super duper long. I just want to have a couple of little flyaway pieces to give the authenticity of, you know, a nice carefree mane that has some you know some length to it and has a couple of 
nice pieces just kind of coming out and of course you can fiddle with yours all you want maybe a couple longer pieces over and through here and then we're going to utilize our medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put your uh, small brush away wherever you'd like to take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our flowers. So I'm gonna use my medium brush for this. I'm gonna be using yellow, orange, white, brown, and maybe a little bit of black too. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna be doing just another layer on them with my yellow paint. So you can see that the yellow is really nice and vibrant at this point. You don't need a lot, just kind of repaint those um, those petals with a little bit of yellow paint. I'm doing the entire thing so that way um, I can just build my other colors on top of this. It provides me with the smart process of not having to paint around objects. So if I, you know, if you can think of a neutral or a common color within certain pieces of an object like for me this particular object i see yellow in the whole thing so i can utilize that yellow as my base coat i know we use white as the base base coat but that was kind of just like a primer coat to me um, i can utilize the yellow as a base coat for the entire petal the center and then i can build the other colors on top of it so it's just an easy way for me to not worry about having to paint around certain objects. It, it kind of expedites my process a little bit. So once I've got all of these painted with yellow, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the centers of them. So you could wash your brush, but I'm just going to wipe mine off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up some brown paint and I'm going to dot the center just kind of like this little circular kind of area while i have this brown on my brush i can if i want to just pull it out in between some of these petals that's going to provide a little bit of a shadowy kind of look throughout those petals and the center i'm doing with dots i think i am going to pick up a little bit of black paint because i want some of this center to be um, nice and shadowy and dark. So I just picked up a little bit of black. I'm going to put it around the part of the edge of this center so we can get a little three-dimensional look going and maybe a tiny bit right in that center itself. I'm going to wipe my brush off of my paper towel. I'm going to pick up some yellow and white and just kind of, you know what? I'm going to go wild and crazy. I'm picking up a little bit of burnt sienna too. I want to speckle this little inside of here just so I have some real good texture. So I did yellow, rust, and white as my little texture inside of that. So I'm going to repeat that step for all of them. So I'm going to wipe my brush off of my paper towel, pick up a little bit of brown, figure out where I want the center to go. So this one I'm going to have looking a little bit from the side. So I'm going to have this one have a little bit bigger of a center like that. I can take that brown while it's on my brush and kind of pull it out and give a couple of little shadows in between some of these petals, something like that. I'm going to have these, this little area is going to, I think I'm going to put some, um, a deeper shadow underneath that, but for now, we'll just do that. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off, pick up a tiny bit of black paint to give myself this deep shadow, maybe a little bit more than that, a little deep shadow around part of that center. I'm going kind of for the right hand side of that little nucleus, maybe a little tiny bit in the center of it, something like that. And then I'm going to, uh, I wiped my brush off. I'm picking up rust yellow and white all on my brush at the same time and I'm going to give myself a little bit of texture right in this little nucleus right here so not I'm not really doing much just giving it a little some little polka dots to give it a little bit more texture wiping my brush off picking up some brown going down to this flower right here dotting in my center area 
which is only going to be partial because of some of it's hidden behind there, using some of this brown as little shadows between some of these petals. You don't have to do it to all of them, just some of them would be great. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off, pick up a teeny bit of black paint, give myself a real shadow on this maybe right hand side of this center. Again, just little tiny polka dots, wipe my brush off, pick up my rust yellow and white all on my brush at the same time to give myself a little extra texture in that center part of the, of the flower. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And this is where I'm gonna be adding orange to my petals. So wash and dry my brush. You do not need a lot. I'm gonna take a little bit of orange and I'm gonna really streak it in the in about half of that petal from the center to about halfway. And you don't need it to be a really clean line, something that just kind of gives that hint of it, you know, the petal started nice and dark near the center of the flower and then gets to be that lighter, brighter color as it emerges, you know, farther out towards the towards the edge of the flower. So I'm gonna do that to get them as orangey as I want. And then if I felt that I needed to, what I could do is I could pick up more yellow, well, maybe wash my brush, a little bit more yellow to, if I felt like they needed to, um, you know, work each other together. You could even pick up yellow with a little bit of white paint if you wanted to give yourself a couple of extra highlights on those petals. You could pick up yellow with a bit of white and just kind of give yourself these bright little pops of highlights on some of those petals. And then I'll just wash my brush and move to the next one. So washing my brush, picking up a tiny bit of orange paint, giving myself this little um, area at the inside portion of that petal where it's nearing the center of the flower, putting a little bit of orange on there. Then you can wash and dry your brush if you want to, pick up a little bit of yellow and white if you wanted or needed or thought that it would behoove you to add a little bit of extra highlight on any of those petals. You can certainly go for that with a little bit of yellow and white. I'm gonna wash my brush, go ahead and do the same thing to this little flower down here. A Little bit of orange on my brush, putting it in the part of the petal that is closest to the center of that flower. And then I'm gonna wash my brush and pick up a little bit of yellow and white. If I feel that any of these little petals could use a little extra punch of brightness, and then the only other thing that I need to do to my flowers is uh, put a shadow under them if I need to. So places where I would probably want a shadow is underneath this one and maybe a little bit underneath that one. So I'm just washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black paint and I'm gonna put a tiny shadow underneath these petals. So it gives it that three-dimensional look on top of the bridle. I'm gonna put a little bit underneath these ones so they look like they're casting a shadow right on my horse. And if you felt that you needed to, you know, bring them out even further, feel free to do so. The, the longer those shadows are, the more it's gonna look like that flower is set away from the, um, away from the horse. So it would make it look poofier. I'm gonna put a little one underneath here not quite sure what if this flower is all I had dreamt it would be, but I might put a couple pieces of the mane going over it too, or a little bit more orange, maybe a little more orange. <laughs> so this is the beautiful part about making flowers on the fly. You can just have fun with um, their intensity and what you want them to do. Yeah, I think a little bit of orange is all I needed in that one. And then we have one little step left to go. So once you've got your beautiful flowers all nice and painted on here and you've got any any little tweaks done that you want to do we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so you can just get ready 
All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm going bottom right, and I'm gonna use that gray color to sign it. So I do my initials, but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like to use as your identifying mark is totally fine. It's your painting, you sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted your, yourself a beautiful horse and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.